Welcome to Lecture Online. In the previous videos, we've learned that when we take the derivative of the unit step function, we get the impulse function, also known as the delta function. But what do we get when we integrate a unit step function? It turns out we get what we call the ramp function. So here we have a unit step function, and of course the integral of any function is the area underneath the curve. If we draw a line from here, we keep on moving it to the right, Notice, as time continues, the area underneath the unit step function increases proportionally to the elapsed time. That results in a ramp function or a function with a steady slope. If it's the unit function or the unit step function, then the slope will equal to 1. If the amplitude of the unit function is greater than 1, then the slope here will also be steeper. The equation looks as follows. We obtain what we call the RAM function when we integrate from minus infinity to a particular point in time, whatever that time is along the time function of the unit step function, we end up with t times the unit step function. Now, of course, the unit step function guarantees that when time is less than zero, we don't get any value at all, because otherwise, you plug in a negative value for t, you end up with a negative result. And of course, you want to have zero prior to that moment, so we multiply the slope, 1 times t, times the unit step function to ensure that there's no value for time less than zero. The result is that a RAM function is equal to zero for time less than zero, and is equal to t for time greater than zero, again, assuming that the step function starts at t equals zero. We can also move the start of the step function to the right or to the left. With other words, that results in a ramp function that starts to the right or to the left from t equals 0. If it's supposed to start at t sub naught, then the ramp function from t minus t sub naught, so then it's equal, then it's a function of t minus t sub naught, it will then be equal to 0 prior to t sub naught, and it'll be equal to t minus t sub naught after t sub naught. Or, if we move the starting point to before time equals zero, to minus t sub naught, then the RAM function will be a function of t plus t sub naught, which will be equal to zero for time less than t sub naught, or I should say less than minus t sub naught, and it will be equal to, time, uh, to t plus t sub naught for time greater than minus t sub naught. So there's some peculiarities about the way they're defined, make sure you see that, but notice again, the RAM function is a very important input function as a result of dealing with first-order linear differential equations because sometimes we need to be able to integrate the step function and when we integrate the step function we need to know what we're dealing with. In this case we now realize we're going to be dealing with the RAM function. In the future we're going to give you some examples here of how to deal with the unit step function, the delta function, and the RAM function to define inputs of certain types that can then be put together as a combination of the three that we just saw, the delta function, the unit step function, and now also the RAM function. So make sure you understand the definitions, and now we'll see how they're applied in the videos to come.